you know uh, uh, what I I I wanted to tell you. Now we come to um, uh, uh, touch and Meena Kanda Sami. Now at the knowledge level or uh, recognizing and recalling level, uh, you attend this information. Meena Kanda Sami is a Dalit woman poet. She comes from uh, uh, Tamil Nadu and uh, therefore uh, is a bilingual or multilingual uh, poet because Tamil Nadu is a, uh, is a, is, is a state where boundaries uh, uh, are very close to Kerala and uh, above Andhra Pradesh and uh, you know so in that part generally you know Malayali people can speak Tamil and Tamil people can speak Malayali and uh, Telugu uh, is also part of that in that uh, so and then Tamil is uh, the oldest uh, one of the oldest languages of the world now she is uh, uh, from this generation now what does this generation mean that uh, uh, she is the youngest poet and youngest writer in the entire uh, syllabus okay and uh, now uh, what is so important about her that she ha her writing has been included uh, in the syllabus whereas she is uh, still uh, uh, not of that age okay generally people are 60 70 when one's uh, poem or his story is included or most of them are no more and uh, they have become legends and that is why uh, their stories are included now uh, the most uh, important thing about uh, her is that she has invented a new idiom in uh, indian english writing uh, her language of poetry is uh, uh, very different from the language of poetry that used to exist uh, two decades or three decades uh, ago now there is, there is a term called modernism so modernism uh, this term is uh, important uh, uh, about for nism is actually and uh, later on but uh, her writing is uh, uh, the writing of protest uh, a political uh, writer and a Dalit writer and one who will not only speak from the cognitive domain but will also speak from the emotional and uh, psychomotor or the sensory domain okay so uh, this poem uh, is the uh, best one so far as uh, uh, the three domains of learning are concerned why because uh, a Dalit a Dalit's body a Dalit's body is also employed at the same time when the Dalit's mind is employed and uh, Dalit's uh, emotional uh, intelligence is also employed at the same time now how how does that happen for example uh, say say you say somebody is a sweeper in the town so that sweeper uh, you see is doing something which exposes which ex, which actually challenges his senses all the time say urinal or uh, you know uh, uh, excreta or gutter for example now that area is uh, you know so it's not just uh, cognitive it's not just cognitive what is so cognitive about a gutter okay it is so much affective and so much psychomotor so much sensory now can anyone of us who uh, who can anyone of us uh, go and do that task okay perhaps we will start vomiting or there will be issues when cleaning a gutter or some so 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 uh, so she is a, a poet who can handle all these areas in her poetry because she comes from dalit community and where uh, these three domains uh, have been uh, integral and the caste society has always exploited you know so caste society will employ you for cleaning but at the same time they will exploit your emotional intelligence they will exploit your sensory intelligence they will exploit your cognitive intelligence okay all of the together and they'll pay you uh, the least amount uh, which uh, is uh, something like you know 20 rupee 30 rupee 40 rupee 50 rupee 
for one one job whereas the amount of intelligence and uh, different domains of intelligence which have been utilized into it nobody can compete not even a ceo of a company uh, will employ that much intelligence which a gutter sweeper a gutter sweeper employs in uh, india now we rank that task as if it is nothing but if we use the the learning domains and the neurology uh, of human being and the stm long term memory i tell you all of that data of cleaning gutter go into the uh, brain and that remains there for years and how do you handle that how do you handle that stuff how do you handle that memory uh, which has been shifted to your uh, neurology to your brain just because of the social reason and for which you have not been paid and you were not even given the protective kits okay have you ever seen a gutter cleaner uh, walking like a doctor when he goes into a theater operation uh, room no a uh, lot of people die in gutters every uh, year so uh, meena kanda swami therefore uh, is uh, a poet a dalit poet who comes from that community and uh, she is a distinct voice and her idiom is different her language is different and she is also uh, somebody who writes in english uh, along with the uh, tamil therefore her appeal is also international okay and uh, she therefore has become popular in different parts of the world okay and wherever she is invited she goes and she uh, reads out her poetry now you see this poem touch so the poem touch uh, in itself uh, the title itself tells you about uh, a very challenging topic okay why has she chosen the title touch because she comes from dalit community and this word touch is a uh, crucial and uh, from on the three domain of uh, our uh, uh, learning the word touch come from uh, the uh, sensory uh, motor or the psychomotor area okay not from the cognitive area so uh, you see that the word touch now tells us that right now we have before us three domains and uh, the word touch come from because what do you touch do you touch some surface some skin or uh, something you know and in a dalit uh, case uh, perhaps you you say no you can't be touched okay you are untouchable so you can't be touched okay and if we touch you then we have to uh, take bath and uh, and because you are not pure so touch actually reminds us uh, several uh, connotations okay untouchability purity sacredness and uh, uh, and humiliation at the same time uh, torture okay and uh, uh, see uh, pollution okay uh, all, all that okay and we also have our experiences of touch okay so what are the uh, how how we use the verb touch in our day to day life uh, we can also understand from there uh, how we handle the the poetry or the practice or the habit of touch okay in our day to day life now this poem uh, begins uh, uh, on this note have you ever tried meditation now she is asking us have you ever tried meditation struggling hard to concentrate and keeping your mind as blank as a white washed wall by closing your eyes nose ears and shutting out every positive every possible thought full stop so you see this uh, beginning of the poem uh, is uh, uh, interrogating uh, is a question now in this question what we notice 
she is asking have you ever tried meditation so meditation is a is a form of uh, uh, yogic uh, exercise okay in which one sits uh, uh, in a certain posture uh, padmasan or vajrasan or like any and uh, then one shuts one's eyes and how does one shut one's ear is a question and how does one shut one's nose is a question so can i mean have you ever tried meditation so what did you do in that did you struggle to concentrate uh, and keeping your mind as blank as white washed and now can you shut your mind or can you make your mind a uh, clean slate again when a lot has been written on your mind so she is uh, as a poet as a dalit poet now this meditation and yogic practice has uh, been very popular among the upper uh, strata of the hindu society that is among the upper caste uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, thinking about uh, yoga and meditation and uh, not merely not only uh, uh, a mode of physical exercise but lot of people talk about how to how it is spiritual and how it can take us to a uh, closer to our own soul and god and what not okay so uh, the underlying questions in the very beginning are can we use our mind as a, a wall which is white wash can we white wash our mind and neurology says that we cannot wash white wash our mind which means that whatever has been written on the hard disk that is the brain is part of your memory and you cannot delete uh, uh, any any of uh, of these files so so you see this is the very uh, first important uh, question that uh, uh, she is raising which means that the uh, that the mind is uh, not something which you can at your will white wash or uh, uh, forget and at your own will you can remember uh, brain which is the base of mind is a kind of chemistry where once the senses or the uh, ears all information go to our brain through senses so not, there is nothing which enter our brain without our senses either we listen a language or we touch something or we uh, taste something or we see something or we feel something with our body or we uh, take the language in us in our brain and we try uh, feeling something somebody so you see there is no other way that we can take the input of knowledge so input of knowledge is either cognitive or emotional or psychomotor okay and that is what she is uh, asking here that uh, when you tried meditation uh, did you struggle did you struggle could you shut off your ears now is it possible uh, could you shut off your nose and could you uh, white wash your mind uh, and uh, uh, everything and the only failure that ever came now everything and the only failure that ever came the only gross betrayal was from your skin from your own skin you will have known this so she is now uh, saying in an ironical way that what is the irony 
the irony of a meditator is that uh, uh, his or her own skin betrays oneself. Why? Because our skin is constantly in touch with the environment. We we register the temperature. We register uh, the presence. We register everything through our uh, skin or through our touch. So touch uh, is uh, now uh, uh, she is she has in a way challenged the very idea of uh, the uh, philosophy which advocates that uh, we can transcend our uh, uh, body. So you see, there is a philosophy which uh, talks about the soul, S-O-U-L. Now the soul uh, in the Gita, it is said that it cannot be burnt, it cannot be, uh, it cannot, nobody can, you see, nobody can do anything with it. Fire cannot burn it, water cannot uh, wet it and like that. It means the soul is bodiless. Now, the poet is raising one question that without body, nothing exists for us. And uh, it is a false claim that you say you have whitewashed your mind or you say uh, you have shut your nose, you have shut your ears. She says, no, you can't do all of these things. Your own skin betrays you. Okay? Uh, that means betrays here, it becomes the channel of giving information about your existence in the, in the world. Now, do you still remember how the first distractions arose? So when in the meditation, do you remember how the first distractions arose? And you blamed skin as a sinner. And you blamed skin as a sinner. So she is here telling us about uh, how most of the uh, religious cults and belief systems that uh, teach us to, to become transcendent, transcendent, that is we transcend our body and we become a soul and then we say we are spiritual and we understand uh, the world differently. So she is raising question uh, against uh, this also. Say, say you have, uh, you have uh, always called your body a sinner. So most of the belief systems, uh, for example, now here they, there are many, you know, concepts, the ideas that are ab about our body. Okay, the idea of uh, uh, idea of uh, uh, touch touchable body, the idea of untouchable body, the idea of virginity, the idea of uh, uh, whose uh, this body is, the idea of uh, uh, how beautiful I am, the idea of uh, will I will I look the uh, most handsome person or the most beautiful person. You see, all of these ideas are myths are uh, uh, taboos. Why? Because ultimately they give you, uh, uh, ultimately, you know, they give you a philosophy where uh, somebody will say that uh, uh, to, to deal with body is uh, the task of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, holiness. Okay. And uh, so uh, right from the beginning, what we notice she is uh, raising a uh, question uh, uh, regarding the uh, the gates the gates of knowledge okay so there are several gates of knowledge you know okay so cognitive uh, gate cognitive gate and is opens through languages okay there is no other way uh, i mean cognitive means uh, where you receive meaning and give meaning Okay, so receiving and giving meaning is uh, the task of uh, language. So when you give somebody an apple, this is not uh, a cognitive thing. This is uh, more psychomotor. Somebody sees it and you hold it, somebody holds it. But when you say uh, 
except this uh, apple i have specially bought it for you last night from the apple market where i got it from uh, shimla for you now if you give this this is a cognitive way of uh, uh, connecting to the apple and connecting to the uh, to the uh, to the guest or the friend okay so uh, and you blame skin as a, a sinner how when you when your kundali or kundalini was rising so kundalini is uh, another term in uh, uh, hatha yoga in yogic uh, uh, writing where when you have uh, been meditating so the energy uh, from the uh, from the below of your spinal cord the lower part of your spinal cord uh, gets activated and it rises up and rises up and it reaches to the uh, brain to the to this area and this area then becomes like a flower okay and the, from bottom it rises up like a snake like a snake okay so this is a kundali kundalini jagran and uh, that is uh, this phrase is very common among uh, yogis and spiritual people and you know these days you have so many uh, people doing art of living and all like that so they are all uh, busy in that area so this dalit woman poet is uh, uh, questioning the questioning very idea of this uh, spiritualism or meditation or <clears throat> no, she is not rejecting or she is not uh, saying that uh, this is good or bad but she is asking question i mean can you can you can you clean your brain can you clean your mind white wash it can you stop uh, your ears how do you shut off them how do you shut off your skin your entire body is a 